angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy. Eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. One of the most interesting, and I would say best, Christmas disc CDs that I've listened to in recent years is the one we're going to be talking about today. Uh, welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joined in studio with our resident musical expert, the wild man of the Ozarks, <laughs> Joe Artis, and a gentleman who is a legitimate musician uh, and has the credentials to back it up. Four Grammys, 10 Dove Awards, uh, front man for one of the most influential Christian rock bands of all time, Petra, uh, John Schlitt. John, Thank welcome you. and Merry oh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Isn't this a wonderful time? <laughs> You're, it, well, it is. And one of the things that always bothered me in my career as a, uh, in secular radio, mm -hmm. I spent a number of years in secular top 40 radio, was mm -hmm. every December we would start pulling out the same old tracks released by musicians who, frankly, well, I'll, I'll keep it clean, uh, <laughs> didn't live a very... Christian or Christmassy lifestyle the other 11 months out of the year and suddenly we're playing all these discs by people or these tracks by people who uh, uh, put out a Christmas disc just to make some money during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Your Christmas disc opens up with an arrangement of Handel's Messiah, which is awesome. I've never heard it with guitars before for one thing, <laughs> but the vocal work on that and I've sung Handel's Messiah, uh -huh. um, both with a mixed choir, but also did it with a four-part a cappella men's chorus. And I sang the high part, so I know it gets up there. Um, what was it that inspired you to include Handel's Messiah on a rock Christmas album? It just made sense. It really did. I mean, <laughs> it, it's totally a classic song. And yes, we were going to rock it up. My whole vision for the, the Christmas record was to... Um, Use rock, an exciting music form, but don't lose the spirit of Christmas music. Right. Uh, a lot of bands will go in and, you know, rock, and just you know, the whole idea of the Christmas spirit is lost. Yeah. Heavy metal joy to the world. Exactly. And, and <laughs> or, or, or just the, the things that don't even talk about the, you know, the Christ in Christmas, simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Right, and, right, uh, right, right. You know, just yeah. things like that. that really rock around the clock. Uh, yeah, what, Santa what, baby. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah. I didn't, I, I wanted to, to, to honor the spirit of Christmas right. music. And in doing that, uh, we would take traditional songs. They were all traditional. I, we had one original and, um, and do it with energy because it was rock. And sometimes, uh, you know, in a, a, a lot more subtle type of energy, but it was a rock album, a Christian rock album honoring Christmas music. Mm -hmm. And Heinz was high. I mean, you couldn't get more traditional. Oh, no, that. absolutely. And on top of that, um, my uh, my son-in-law, my producer, goes, Jan, Dad, you can't do this anyway. So uh, <laughs> you'll do the first part, and then we'll get we'll get ladies to come in and sing. I says, Oh no, we won't. This is my record. We'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. So it was a, sort of a start out as a joke, and uh, I sang all the, the you know the lower parts and that. In other words, all the voices are me, which I thought was very appropriate. It was not, it wasn't a self gratifying thing. It just, because it was my record I, and I'm a singer, I should cover that. And then we started going to the higher notes, higher notes. And he, he figured about halfway through, we'd have the girls come in and do it that. I said, no, we're not. He said, I can do that. He said, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't. And you know, we go through that. So I did that and goes, wow. And he goes, you can't do the next one. Oh, yes, I can. And I do the next one. About that time, he started going, maybe he can. He starts getting out his, his phone and, and taking pictures of it, or actually video of it, <laughs> to prove to people that it really was me. And the last note, he goes, he goes, okay, hold on. Don't do anything. He puts a camera and, and shows it on and, uh, and puts the video on. And I'm hitting the high note. And he goes, I can't believe it. And you got to understand, Dan is very, very, he's seen it all. Yeah. Kind of thing. And he starts laughing. And he says, 
I got it on camera. I got it. This is going to be so funny. He goes, and it worked out really well. And, and his version of it, his, his uh, design of the song was really relevant for where, where the music was. Mm-hmm. Very different, very, very, to me, new sounding, but, mm-hmm. but with respect. And, and that was, I think, well achieved. Um, we, we have heard in some praise band settings where there was guitar added mainly to glorify the guitarist and not to yeah. glorify the song. But yeah, the right. Hallelujah Chorus, as it's on your disc, The Christmas Project, I should mention the name of the disc, <laughs> the, the Christmas Project, um, is is really uplifting and wonderful. What Thank was you. that high note? I'm just curious. What? I don't know. I'll be honest. Probably I don't best know. not to know if you're thinking uh, about it. Yeah, if thing. I start thinking about it, <laughs> all I know is when I have my Christmas, when I do my Christmas tour, which is uh, like most of November, December, uh, I do it as an encore. Just because they most of the time people... Are you going to do Handel's Messiah? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure yet. It's, um, and so I do as an encore, and it's a great payoff. And I, mm. it, for folks that know about music or know about touring and, and the live shows, it is a very satisfying payoff. It's mm. like the final thing you remember. Go, that was so cool. Doesn't matter anything you did the rest of the night, but as long as you did Handel's Messiah, yeah, yeah. Was okay. Uh, the other uh, songs on here. Do you hear what I hear? Little drummer boy, mm-hmm. Oh Holy Night, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, yes. Good Christian Men Rejoice all very traditional traditional. songs, but done with a a contemporary feel. Mm -hmm. Um, When you were going through the list of possible songs for the Christmas project, um, what criteria? Would you, are these just your personal favorites? Are Uh, these the ones that spoke to you lyrically? About half of them are my personal favorites and the other half are Dan's personal favorites. That, that I have to say that, yes, it was a selfish thing. These are songs that we really felt that would be very adequate for, we didn't want to do the ones that are Everybody always does all the time, although there were some that we had to because they're so traditional. If you don't, it's right. not a Christmas record. Mm-hmm. So um, now Dan wanted to do a little drummer boy. I really didn't want to. I, I didn't. I, uh, it was it sort of to me, it fit in that category where everybody does it. I just tired of hearing it. But boy, when he gave me his tradition of it, mm-hmm. it was oh, my gosh, this it truly is probably one of my favorite. It's mind blowing. I mean, yeah. there's nothing like it. Yeah. Mm. And then then talking, you know, we, because this is a TV program, we're able to show the video mm-hmm. and the video is ridiculous. Yeah. I, I love the video. It's a, and it was a gift by uh, uh, Sailor Brothers, who are uh, a great team that go out and do a lot of of uh, sports um, uh, videos, you know, for for teams and stuff. Mm. And they are very heavy duty Christians and they heard the record. and They said, oh, we can we do Little Drummer Boy? I said, OK. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I'd love to see what you did. And they did an amazing job. Mm. And we'll give you a chance to see that right now from The Christmas Project, John Schlitt and Little Drummer Boy.
Little Drummer Boy, John Schlitt from his CD, The Christmas Project. Um, that, that song is, uh, it, it, it's, you're right, it is done a lot, but uh, it, it is so uplifting that it's, uh, if you can get a good arrangement of it, mm -hmm. uh, you can really put yourself into it. And again, uh, I don't want to talk too much about it, but, but Dan is my secret weapon. Dan, my son-in-law, yes, but truly is one of the best producers, uh, at least for me. He really understands me. He knows how to get the, the vocal arrangements right. out. And he is very fresh in his, in his thinking of designing music. So uh, it really, he, he came through 100% uh, on this record. And we were just totally blown away with it. I, I'm still, I'm, I'm happy about the Christmas record being this way because I get to I get to bring it out every year. Mm -hmm. That's one of the cool. Th it's one of the bad things. And one of the cool things about Christmas record you can you can only uh, feature it two months of the year, but you get to bring it out every year. Mm -hmm. And it's not it it won't. I I don't think it will age. So no. I'm pretty happy with. Well, it. the thing that impressed me about the, the disc was that um, all of the tracks on here uh, have a, a message to them. Absolutely. They're not just something with you know let's put some bells in behind it and we can sell right. it at Christmas time. Right. Um, the original song in here, uh, What Christmas Needs to Be, mm -hmm. uh, what's the origin of that? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you listen to it, you'll see that uh, uh, it basically reminds you of, of what Christmas used to be before big stores got a hold of it, and before all of a sudden Christmas... Uh, uh, Ex, you know, storefronts are all Christmas before commercialized yeah, the daylight. Yeah, out of before it. before Halloween has even started. You know, you got Halloween on one side of the store and, and Christmas on the other. It, it's that kind of thing, and and I understand because I'm a capitalist. I I'm okay with that, but it just sort of stole away the spirit of Christmas. And what we were trying to do is give the vision of how it used to be, and uh, and and the way it used to be. Christ was the center focus of Christmas mm -hmm. and not what you were going to get and what kind of special, you know, are you going to get the, the, the special toy of this year? Uh, uh, although kids, let's, kids are kids. Of course, they're going to think of what's under the Christmas tree. I sure. love that. I think that's fantastic. But uh, when adults start thinking more about what's under the Christmas tree than Christ, that, that starts to get a little edgy for me. Mm. And so uh, it was just sort of reminding us that there was a time when Christmas was absolutely all about Christ. Mm. And that's how it should be now. We talked in a, in a previous conversation about um, how your grandchildren have impacted you. And uh, how do you, well, I guess it's a two-part question. How have they impacted your view of Christmas? And how do you try to keep Christmas at the center of the holiday for them? Very tough. Uh, I, as a grandfather, it's tough. As a, as a parent, it's tough. Uh, I want them to experience the joy that I got as a, as a spoiled uh, U.S. citizen. Uh, but on the other hand, they, they need to understand. We absolutely make sure they understand that uh, why, you know, why the star? That star is about the, the, the star that led the wise men. You know, you've got to make sure that they hear the story of Christmas. You've got to understand. And when they, we go to church... We find the right kind of church that, that will tell the story. Mm -hmm. The story needs to be told. The story of Christmas, it's the most important story in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. Well, besides the crucifixion. So, uh -huh. I mean, some would argue. Yeah, I, I, there's two major important stories of, of mankind, and those are the two. Hmm. When, when you were a kid, how, how was... Uh, how was Christmas in your household? Are, are, things, are things different now? Are, are, you, are you trying to recreate what it was like for you then? Or I want, I want my grandkids, I, want, I wanted my kids, I want my grandkids to totally know in the name of Christ, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. I want them to have a beautiful memories. I, you know, I'm, again, I'm, I'm an American. I'm a capitalist. I, I want them to enjoy that. But on the same hand, I want the whole day is, you know, getting together with family, having this beautiful celebration. Uh, it's sort of, and I, I know it's going to probably rock some people's boats. It's sort of like a Christian, a, a Christian concert, an amazing, exciting time in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's, that is an amazing, it can be an amazing tool. Christmas is an amazing tool. Right. Very enjoyable memory, just memories uh, that will live on <clears throat> forever. But we've got to make sure that they, we understand it's the name of Christ. It's in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. The whole celebration here was about the fact that a little baby was born to in 30, 33 years to be the sacrificial lamb that gave us all the chance to see, to see God. Right. I mean, that was a pretty major deal. Not to mention in three years, he taught all mankind, 
the reality of what truth is and what life is and what what uh, what real joy can be through Jesus, you know, through in God's vision. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, he did a lot. Come on. Mm. Many of the songs in here um, from uh, the Hallelujah Chorus, uh, some of the older hymns like What Child Is This? We Three Kings, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen mm -hmm. are a couple of 300 years old. Absolutely. Um, why did you choose to go that route instead of trying to come up with, say, 10 brand new Christian Christmas songs? We didn't feel we needed to. Uh, I wanted I wanted traditional. I wanted I want the traditional Christmas is so beautiful. You take it and you bring it a little up to date to where it's fresh for the next generation. And because they, they've worked, <laughs> they've worked for 200 years or how mid two uh, thousand, who knows? They've worked. Why try to change something that works? Uh, and we did one, again, one original, I, which I told, I thought was absolutely appropriate. And so uh, there was no need to write new stuff. I, mm. I love the old stuff. It was pretty much celebrating what I grew up with, mm -hmm. but in a fresher way. Hmm. Well, as a John Schlitt fan for at least two decades, I feel like I'm getting my Christmas present a little bit early this year, <laughs> getting to share the set with John Schlitt. <laughs> I think that's quite a deal. Mm. Folks, he's fanatical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I've been around him way too much. Yes. <laughs> he's fanatical. Someday in glory, you have an opportunity to, work up to walk up to George Friedrich Handel. What do you say to him? Oh, boy. That's a good question. I think I would probably go apologize because he had his style and he wrote it the way he wanted to. And I, I think I'd go, was it okay? And if he says, nine, I say, <laughs> I understand. I'm sorry. I had good intentions. But truth is, he probably will know my heart from the word go and I won't have to say a thing anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, I I. It, who knows? I, I just did it the best way I knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, it's a classic. He wrote an amazing piece of art. And to change it uh, to where us common folks can relate to it may have been a big insult, insult to him. <laughs> I hope not. But I did the best I knew how. Mm. As somebody who grew up as a, uh, uh, with you know, rock and roll mm -hmm. in your veins, as it yes. were, um, at, w did you always have an appreciation for that type of music, the, the classic pieces of music that transcend the centuries, or is this no. something that's grown on you over the years? No, I, in fact, I'll be. The, the, I am not a, an old hymns type of guy. I would rather not hear them ever again. I understand there's very good use to them, and the church is used in amazing ways. I don't like them. This is a different story. This Christmas is a different story for me. Uh, it just, there's so much tradition to Christmas that I, I totally can relate to all of it. Uh, and churches, I, I take it back. I love hymns. Everything's great. Uh, but really, it's no, I'm, I'm not a, a, an old traditional type of guy. I, I like the new stuff that has more energy. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like stuff that, that is passionate. Hymns are passionate, but they're musically for me, they're just repeats. All that it repeats, mm -hmm. oh, blah, 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 blah. And to bring out the words that are amazing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the music gets lost in it. So, mm. so um, I'm, I'm sharing my soul. I'm sharing my heart. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but but th with that, no, those Christmas classics are a different ballgame for me. Mm. Yeah, and the Hallelujah Chorus is, oh, uh, is transcendent. Yes. It's a beautiful marriage between the uh, producer and what his vision for what you would do vocally would accomplish. And, and you trusting him to, to follow his lead and what he wanted you to do, but then delivering these incredible vocals and the two of them together. Folks, there's nothing, there's nothing like this in terms of Christmas CD, nothing. Oh, mm. thank you, buddy. The, the influence that Petra has had on, mm -hmm. on uh, current generation of, of music, and, and I have to confess, you know, as uh, somebody who got out of music radio, music broadcasting, you know, 20 years ago and immediately said, that's it, I'm done with hearing loud music on my headphones <laughs> uh, and gravitated toward talk radio. So I, I am really not up to speed on, on who is uh, currently, uh, you know, successful mm -hmm. in, in Christian industry, music mm -hmm. industry. Um, but uh, what, what advice would you give to, to those who are, are, are looking for an outlet, you know, young people like, you know, Joe would have been, say, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, how, what, what sort of guidance and, and, and uh, instruction would you give 
uh, as somebody who's been through it and seen the good and the bad of the music industry. To the Christian? To, to Christian musicians, yes. I would say. Okay, yeah. I would say be content with small things in the beginning. Uh, if, if that's, just be content. Be content with whatever God, what doors God opens up. Uh, there are a lot of groups that uh, may never get out of, a, uh, out of a youth group uh, meetings. Uh, and they just play praise and worship, but play it the best you know how. Seriously, do ne never, ever say to yourself, what's well, Christian music, this is good enough. Always. If you're going to be a Christian artist, you say, this is for Christ. It's got to be better than any other music around. Now, you may not be the best musician. Okay, you know that and when it's ultimately done, it's the best you know how. And it's not necessarily the best, but it's the best you could do. Do the best you can do as a Christian artist. Never settle for good enough. Hmm. And in doing that, God will take it and honor it. And again, you may never be heard, but it's going to be the most satisfying uh, uh, musical experience you're ever going to do. Hmm. Um, and they're going, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say. You got to do it. Well, I got to do secular side and Christian side. And if you want to compare... You're playing the secular side sometimes. Now with us, it was a little bit different story. I actually played in bigger crowds than I did in my secular days. So it's a little unusual. But, but I truly believe the focus for you is to listen to Christ, listen to God, and do the best you know how. And he'll open the doors that are supposed to be for you. And he'll praise God, he'll close the doors that aren't supposed to be for you because he's protecting you. Just be the best you possibly can be. Yeah, uh, that's excellent. Yeah, and the protection aspect of it uh, is is one that I, I suspect many of young musicians would not really be cognizant of. Uh, I mean, you saw the temptations from the secular side. Yeah. I saw just a taste of that in, in yeah. secular broadcasting. Uh, it, it almost destroyed me. Yeah. I mean, it really, because I went into that world without Christ, I, I knew God. I prayed to God every day, but I had no idea who Jesus was. Mm. Like, fair game, fair game. Walked into a world that has nothing to do with Christ. And uh, thinking, oh, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I'm not going to do that. I have no intention to doing this. And it fell right in the middle of all of it. Hmm. As we're in the Christmas season now, yes. um, aside from the gift that God gave the world, he loved the world in this way that he sh gave his mm -hmm. only begotten son. Mm -hmm. um, what are the best gifts that you have received in your life, John Schlitt? My family. Real simple, my family. My, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, my brothers, my mom and dad. Uh, I know that God uses family members to show his love. And I couldn't be loved more. So that, that's, that's, that's it. That was an easy question. Hmm. Was that one that, uh, uh, lo looking back on your life, mm -hmm. was that something that you always appreciated or was this something that... Uh, you, that uh, I think I mentioned in a previous conversation, the spiritual two by four to the head was, did it require a, a little wake up uh, call from the Holy Spirit? I would say that I didn't, you know, I was a kid. I didn't really, um, I took my parents for granted. My brothers were, we were always fighting, you know, that kept, we had, I had two brothers and we weren't necessarily the finest boys. We chased away pretty, pretty much every baby babysitter we ever had. So uh, we weren't the, the, uh, the best kids in the world, but, um, uh, uh, I did love them mm. and do love them and uh, uh, didn't appreciate them quite as much as I do now. Hmm. We'll tell you how you can get a copy of John Schlitt's Christmas Project, a wonderful disc, uh, traditional music with a contemporary feel to it. And again, the uh, hallelujah chorus transcendent. John, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. And Merry honor. Christmas, buddy. For Joe Artis, I'm Derek Gilbert. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. And this is Skywatch TV. We love Christmas music and we hope you do too. We're proud to offer a collection that is a must have for fans of the legendary Christian rock band Petra, the John Schlitt Christmas Collection, only from Skywatch TV. This includes the Christmas Project CD by Petra's lead singer, John Schlitt, featuring his larger than life vocals on nine traditional Christmas hymns and one original, plus a take on the Hallelujah Chorus that will knock you out of your chair. We'll also include John's solo CDs, The Greater Cause and The Grafting. 
Plus, keep your lights on, a DVD that documents John's 2009 concert tour across Europe, and the behind-the-scenes DVD, A Day in the Studio, an inside look at a recording session for Petra's first album featuring John on lead vocals. Three CDs and two DVDs, a retail value of $70, yours for just $29.95, but only when you order from the Skywatch TV store. Order the John Schlitt Christmas Collection by calling 844-750-4985 or log on to skywatchtvstore.com.